In this video, I'm going to talk about the very important topic of statistical tolerance limits. Statistical tolerance limits are used to make a statement about a selected percentage of a population from which a sample was taken with a stated confidence level. For example, you may be able to take a sample of data from your population and state with 95% certainty that 99% of all the items you've produced are within certain limits. Now we're going to talk about two types of tolerance limits. We're going to talk about two-sided intervals where you come up with an upper bound and a lower bound and make a statement about the percentage of population that's within that interval between the bounds. We're also going to talk about one-sided cases in which you're making a statement that you're greater than some bound or, or less than some bound. We're also going to talk about tolerance limits that assume the data come from a normal distribution and those that are distribution free don't make that assumption of normality. As an example, I'm going to suppose that I make widgets. I'm also going to suppose that there's a specification on the breaking strength of the widgets I produce. Each widget is supposed to have a breaking strength within the range 200 plus and minus 25 PSI. Now I've gone out and I've taken a sample of 100 widgets and measured the breaking strength of each one of them. The statement I'd like to make is similar to what I've written here. I'd like to say something like, I'm 95% confident that the breaking strength of 99% of all the widgets I'm producing is between blank and blank. And I'd like to use statistical techniques to fill in those blanks. The statement shown on the previous slide was a two-sided statistical tolerance interval. There are times when the specification on a product is one-sided. For example, I may not care how strong the widgets are as long as they're strong enough. In such cases, I could make a one-sided tolerance bound, which would say something like I'm 95% confident that the breaking strength of 99% of all the widgets I'm producing is at least blank. That's a one-sided tolerance limit or tolerance bound and we'll talk about those two. In this stack graphics data sheet, you see a column labeled strength. In this column, there are 100 measurements made on the breaking strength of my widgets. To estimate a statistical tolerance interval from a set of data like this, I'll go up to the main menu to SPC and select Capability Analysis for variables. Now since the data were taken one at a time, I'll select individuals, which will open up a data input dialog box. On this data input dialog box, I'll put the name of the column that has the data, and down in the edit fields below, put the lower specification limit, which in this case is 175, the target or nominal value, which is 200, and the upper specification limit, which is 225. When I press OK, I'll see an Analysis Options dialog box, and I can actually do a capability analysis assuming distributions other than the normal or making transformations on the data. I'm going to just select the default normal distribution, though, and press OK. Now, on the Tables and Graphs button, it'll offer to calculate a number of different things for me. The only thing I really want to see in this case are the normal tolerance limits. So I'm going to uncheck everything else and press OK, in which case I'll get a table with normal tolerance limits. Now they're called normal tolerance limits because they assume the data come from a normal distribution. Now, in the middle of the screen, you'll see 95% to tolerance interval for 99.73% of the population. Now that's not exactly what I wanted, so I'll push the right mouse button and go to Pane Options. I have a sample size of 100, 
I'm going to request a confidence interval, confidence level of 95%. That's correct. But the population percentage I said I wanted to make a statement about was actually 99, exactly 99%. So I'll change that to 99, press OK, and now I have the interval I wanted. The interval is actually 184.5 to 221.1. I'm 95% confident that 99% of all the widgets I'm producing have breaking strengths between 184.5 and 221. Now, since my specification was 175 to 225, I'd be happy. That entire tolerance interval is within the specification limits. If I wanted to switch from a two-sided tolerance interval to a one-sided tolerance bound. I'd go back to the data input dialog box by clicking the button on the toolbar. I'd get rid of the upper specification limit and the nominal value and leave only a lower specification limit. When I then click OK, you'll see that the program now gives a 95% tolerance bound for 99% of the population. Now I could say with 95% confidence that 99% of all the widgets have breaking strengths of at least 186 pounds per square inch. You will notice that this lower bound is not the same as the lower bound was before when I had a two-sided interval. That's because when you make a 95% statement, a two-sided statement, you have to take the 5% that's not within the interval and break it up, 2.5% at the high side, 2.5% at the low side. When you make a one-sided bound, you can take the 5% and put it all at the low side. Now, we've looked at this data in other videos. And found out that really the normal distribution is not a very good model for the data. On the other hand, if you take the logarithms of, of the data, that's much more normally distributed. I can have stat graphics account for this log normal behavior by pressing the right mouse button and going to analysis options. Down at the bottom near the center is an option to specify a transformation. I'm going to click on the radio button that says logarithm and press OK. The program has now adjusted for the fact that the data are normally distributed only after a transformation, a log transformation has been taken. So what it's actually done for me under the covers now is it's taken all of my data and calculated a natural logarithm. It's then computed a statistical tolerance bound, a one-sided bound in this case, lower bound, for the logs of breaking strength because they are normally distributed. It then took the lower bound in the log scale, took the inverse log, and is now showing me that I can be 95% confident that 99% of the population are at least 186.9 PSI. I was able to use the log transformation here in process capability analysis because I had determined previously that the logarithm was a good normalizing transformation. Incidentally, this technique within process capability analysis could not be done in version 15. It's new in version 16. Let's suppose, however, that I have no idea what distribution is appropriate for strength. What I can do then is go to the table and graphs button on the analysis toolbar. And instead of asking for normal tolerance limits, ask for distribution free limits. These are limits that make no assumption about what the distribution is in that underlying population. If I press OK, the distribution-free tolerance limits will appear. And what you see on the screen now is a 95% tolerance bound, lower tolerance bound,
or 97.0485% of the population. Now, how these distribution-free tolerance limits work is they take the extremes of your sample. In this case, the smallest observed observation was 191.3. And use that smallest observation as a bound. And we can state now with 95% confidence that at least 97.0485% of all the widgets I'm producing have a strength of at least 191.3. Now, unfortunately, I don't have control over the percentage of the population anymore. That's actually a function of the size of the sample. If you have 100 observations, it's always going to be a 95% bound for 97.0485% of the population. If I needed a 99% interval, a statement for 99% of all my widgets, I'd need more than 100 observations. How many more? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to go back to the data input dialog box, and I'm going to use a little stat graphics operator called reshape. And I'm going to tell it to reshape strength into a column of 300 observations. It'll do that by basically repeating that column three times till it expands out to 300 observations. If I then press OK, you'll see that it will make a 95% statement about approximately 99% of the population. Now, I'm just demonstrating this. Um, I don't really have, until I go out and take 300 independent samples, a tolerance interval for 99% of the population. I'm just showing you what it would require sample size-wise if you didn't assume a normal distribution.